All right, YouTube, so today we're actually going to do something pretty special. I decided to go all out this week uh, and actually buy the full turbo kit from turbokits.com. Now, they do something pretty unique. It's basically a direct bolt-on kit. They have all the tuning done. They have all the, the turbo sizing. You don't have to worry about any of that. So it's a great, complete bolt-on kit. Now, it's actually going to take my Hyundai Genesis Coupe from that stock 348 horsepower to sit right around about 500 horsepower, depending on what wastegate duty cycle you're running and uh, a few other things as well. So, <clears throat> real quick, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the kit and what comes with it, and then also going to go ahead and give you a rundown of the tools you're going to need for the job. Starting us off on our parts here, we have our exhaust, which joins back up to our dual exhaust on the car. We have this black coated exhaust pipes as well. You can see where the uh, where the wastegate circulation goes, reroute. No screamer pipes on my cars. We also have this one of these intercooler pipes here with a uh, pretty neat design there. Going up this long box here, I went ahead and ordered four feet of extra exhaust to cover up any sort of cutting and splicing I might need to do with my current exhaust to make sure it fits up. Some axle stands. You can see here we have this intercooler. It's going to be very good for cooling. This is actually part of the flange for the V-band on the wastegate. All of our piping, all of our clamps, we have new spark plugs, we have heating blankets, thermal wraps, thermal blankets. We have more intercooler piping up here. A Precision 6266 Turbo. We also have a forged blow-off valve and a Turbo Smart wastegate with a 7 PSI spring built in. We also have a K&N filter. And we also have a GFB electronic boost controller. All right, so for the tools you're going to need, you're going to need basically pretty much everything you can think of. So to start us off, we're definitely going to need a drill, some Phillips heads, some flat heads, uh, a pretty extensive socket sets. We're going to need to make sure we have our deep sockets, Allen keys, safety gloves, utility knife, the high temp uh, RTV gasket maker. We also have some spanners as well, or wrenches of just really pretty much every size you can imagine. We also need several zip ties to cover all of the wiring that we're going to have to do. Uh, you're also going to need a boost gauge. Here I have the, the glow shift boost gauge, boost back gauge that I'm going to be running uh, inside the center console. You're going to need a, a wideband, but I already have that installed. Alright, so as you can see, it's a pretty extensive kit. I mean, it really includes a lot of parts, but follow the instructions and you have a little bit of know-how and do a little bit of research, you'll find out that it's actually pretty easy to do. So, basically the only thing that I don't have here is the ECU. Now that's actually being shipped in from Korea, so uh, that's pretty much the only thing that I'm waiting on with this, besides from installing it. But it should be here in the next few days, so I'll be installing this and when the ECU arrives, I can just drop it in and go. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. take off the front bumper, we need to take off the front headlights. Let's get the fan on too. It's gonna be hot. And not just because of the turbo.
Now we gotta drain the oil. All right, so one thing that's a little bit different here is typically most installs will have you tap into the oil pan, uh, but here we're not going to. We're actually going to tap into the top of the oil sump, which is very, very difficult to see. It's pretty much all the way down there in that crevice. It's a little hard to see because we're under the car here. What we're basically looking at, this is the oil sump. We have the actual the pickup over here. This is what sucks up the oil from the sump to using your system. This piece here, that's our dipstick. So we'll go ahead and just push that out of the way so it's not bothering us. And uh, so this over here is the low part of the sump. The turbo is going to be on this side of the car. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put in our return for the uh, our return line, our oil drain line uh, for the turbo right in here. And basically, you know, up top, of course, we have the dipstick feed here, so that's that's kind of in the way. So we want to make sure that we have adequate spacing, but that we're not hitting anything else that's up in here. So it's, it's very, very, it's not very tight, but you just want to make sure you're not going to run the, the oil line too close to the headers or anything else. So just make sure you have adequate spacing and that you're all planned out. All right. Also, safety glasses are great because you're going to be drilling up and it's going to get right into your eyes. So, of course, uh, be careful with that. And we're going to be using a stepper bit now. On this kit, we need to drill up to a 2732. So we're going to put our oil return line right there. Make sure there's nothing up top. All right, so there you have it. Now you've got a hole, and now you've got to clean not only all the metal shavings off of your face and out of your hair, but you also got to clean up the inside of the oil pan here where it's going to stick to some of that oil, and also from the top because there's a lot of shavings up there. All right, let's get cleaning. And uh, I went ahead and tested the piece already and cleaned up everything on the back side and uh, cleaned up all the shavings and stuff on the inside. Now the only thing left to do here is I have to clean up all this gasket with the razor blade around the entire pan as well as the gasket on the oil pan on the sump that I pulled earlier. Alright, so just on a little piece of workbench here, we've got our oil fitting. That's it. Mm, that's all you need. Now we're gonna put this in the oil pan. Use a little bit of red RTV around the outside just to make sure that it seals. And then we're done with our oil drain return. Alright, so now that we got all of the gasket sealer, the RTV, off the underside of the car, now we need to get it all off the sump, which is not as much of a pain in the ass because you're not laying on your back scraping up at some gasket and shit with a razor blade, so uh, now we just gotta scrape all this off.
All right, now we got to remove the bolts from the exhaust that go to the secondary cats. We also got to take out the O2 sensors. There's two of them uh, in between the primary and secondary catalytic converters uh, to make sure it passes emissions. So we need to pull those out right now so you can drop the, uh, the downpipe um, and uh, the midpipe. Anything goes basically from the, from the primary cats back. All right, so we drain the, the housing. Just trying to not make a mess here, but that's kind of impossible. And then we uh, pretty much capture our power steering fluid in this uh, little container. So now what we're doing is relocating this, the power steering lines. Um, so we've disconnected the reservoir. When you need to do that, you need to disconnect this black hard line. It's, it's clipped in. So you need to undo the clip. Then you have it up, and then you need to switch it so it's on the outside of this power steering line, this fat return line. Move it to the other side. All right, so now it's right here. Uh, now what we need to do is actually turn it around. So what you have to do is there's a clip where the soft line meets the hard line on the bottom as well. Just move the clip down, and it should swivel on that point. So now we can just rotate it. So we got this off now. This is the mounting piece for the power steering reservoir. So we no longer need that. We're going to use the aftermarket one supplied by turbo kits. And we're going to use, I believe it's self-tapping screws to mount this. And it's going to go right here. The original mounting piece is actually in the way. And they say to, to dremel it off, but I'm actually going to just drill the spot welds here. And then uh, just add a little primer on it so it doesn't rust. You clean up the overspray quickly. You don't have to worry about shit. So what we're looking here, this is our, our power steering line again. Now we disconnected uh, this line here from the this metal hard line down at the bottom. And what we've done is we put in a supplied elbow and straight piece. So this is the elbow right here. And then you can see the the straight piece comes right there. Um, to that pipe. So we're going to put the hose clamp down on the bottom. We're going to bend this piece back. We'll probably actually go underneath this uh, this ground here and that'll allow us to have a bit more clearance from the turbo. Uh, of course we're going to heat wrap everything too. I'm going to put our uh, hose clamp on, line up our bottle. <laughs> 